Hello and welcome to Steve McDonald's Arts and Crafts. Um, today I'm going to be talking about um, drilling, sanding and polishing using this, which is a Dremel. Now, I use my Dremel a lot for lots of different things, so I have lots of different attachments for it. I use it for carving and cutting and, and cutting small pieces of wood to make frames. So I have a lot of tools and I am a bit of a hoarder and collector of Dremel tools. So what I'll show you, you don't need everything, but I would advise that you invest in a Dremel rather than one of the cheaper tools because I did have one of the cheaper tools and it just didn't work very long and didn't work very well. And I've found, I've had this Dremel now a couple of years and this is a Dremel 4000 and it works brilliantly. And it comes with this little attachment on it as well, which makes life so much easier for putting things in and having a lot more control. Now, it normally comes with a chuck that looks like this, but I actually bought a proper three, whatever they're called, pinned chuck. They're not very expensive. I got two, I think, for about seven or eight pounds, and they actually work a lot easier. They're a lot nicer to use um, and a lot easier to uh, change things up, up with. So one of the tools I use a lot is these little drill bits, and I use these to drill into resin so you can see there, there's lots of different um, sizes there and when I drill into resin then I usually put a little hook into them and I'll be showing you how to do that in a minute. Um, the other tools I have, as you can see I have loads, I have a lot of different um, grit sanding discs um, because if I want to sand bits off but I also use these stone ones as well um, if I want to do some sanding as well as these if I need to do a lot of sanding. And I'm gonna show you a little bit of sanding in a minute. But I use these polishing wheel, uh, they're really soft, and these polishing ones a lot as well. When I've done the sanding, I then will use those to polish it, try and get back up before I do a tiny little pour in it. Or if I don't wanna do another pour, that I just wanna buff it up. And actually, I use teacup, which you would use to get scratches out of a car, put a bit on there, and then I, I polish it with that. And it works really well, and I'll show you that as well. So you really don't need that. The, the one kit I would suggest you get is uh, this one, um, or one similar to it. And it comes with a lot of different sanding discs, little sanding, those are little sanding discs as well. And a lot of these polishing bits and this is new, I haven't had this very long, and it also comes with a, quite a few different size grits. Now, what I also do is, I know, perhaps you shouldn't, I use, I cut some finer grits and glue them to these um, barrels, so when I'm actually using them, I can go down to a really fine grit if I need to. Okay, so I'll show you how I put a drill bit in it first. So let's choose one of these. And they are quite thin and small. So I'm going to try this one first, which is a really small one. So literally, just like you would load up any other drill, you push that little button there. That holds the chuck so that you can tighten it up. Okay. And then I'll put the bit in, tighten it up a little bit more. Make sure it's central and not hooked into one end anywhere because you don't want it spinning off. And what I do normally do is to check it, I just give it a quick spin and I can see that that is central. Okay, so I'm just gonna get something that I want to drill and then I will show you how I drill. One of the other things that I must emphasize is before you do any drilling or sanding of resin, you must wear a mask. So for the rest of this um, video, I'll probably be doing a voice over. And this is the mask that I use. It's a brilliant mask. It's not very expensive. It's about £30 off Amazon. And it is also, it, I wear it if I'm using polyester resin as well because it, it really does clear off all the fumes. It doesn't let anything through. Um, and it's quite comfortable to wear. So, for example, I'm going to drill a little hole into this. And I cast this quite a while ago just with a bit of leftover resin. Um, it's just a little flat bezel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill into one of the corners so that if you wanted to, you could put a, a ring through it and hang it on a pendant. 
but this is just as an example of how you can drill into it. And when I drill, I always drill onto a piece of hardboard because firstly, I don't want to drill in through into my table and secondly, I know when it's caught. The other thing is I do is I always put a piece of masking tape over whatever it is that I want to drill first, like that. I put it on quite tight. And the reason is, if I slip with the drill, what I don't want to do is I don't want to split it or scratch it or do any damage to it because that can be really frustrating. So I just put a bit of masking tape over it like that. I mark a little dot on it with a permanent marker of where I'm going to drill and I drill. Now, if you're doing a lot of drilling and you really... Um, don't have a steady hand what you can buy for the Dremel is a drill press now I'm not sure if this is really showing on camera but this is a drill press and you can use that quite a lot and they're not actually that expensive um, but if you're only doing a few now and again then I wouldn't worry about it I mean if you've got 30 or 40 to do every day then maybe I would think about getting the drill press but I use the drill press for other things so that's not really needed. Okay, so I'm just going to mark, put my own mask on and uh, then we will get on with drilling. So I'm now ready to drill this one and um, what I shall do is I shall just hold it down, the Dremel's on and it really does slide through it. It's like a hot knife through butter. So you don't have to put any pressure on it really. The, the machine and the tool does it for itself. I always check that it's clean. Okay, so there we go. And now what I'll do is I'll take off the masking tape and show you what the hole looks like. And it, it just comes off and the masking tape doesn't leave any residue or the painter's tape doesn't leave any residue on the actual resin itself. It's just, again, like I said, it's just there so I don't scratch it and to give the uh, drill bit a little bit of grip. So there is a little bit of dust inside, so I'll just blow, well I won't blow away because I've got my mask on. So I'll just remove that, and there we go. And you can easily put a ring through that now, um, and you could link these together, or you could put it on a pendant chain, um, however you want. So what I'm gonna show you next is how I do one of the small crystal drop um, resin pendant so this is the pendant and I want a hole in there because what I want to do is screw in a um, little hook so I've put my masking tape on I've put my little black dot with permanent marker on where I'm going to drill it and uh, so that's protected itself and now I'm going to drill it and don't drill too deep only drill as deep as you need to drill to screw the thing in so that's a very fine drill bit I don't even know if you can see the hole. So I'm now going to take the masking tape off again. Now, I sometimes put a teeny, teeny dob of um, super glue in the hole when I'm screwing this in, but I haven't this time. So literally, I just screw that in, and that's got its own uh, screw in. And to be honest, that, that will hold quite well if you tighten that up. And then that makes a really nice pendant or you can link several together if you've got them and uh, make a bracelet or, or, or more of a necklace going round. And they look great with a chain on. So this is a chain that I've got. And as you can see, there's already a hook in the bottom of this one because if you look at how I cast these and get them out of the mould easily, you'll see that um, I always put a hook in. So now I'm going to show you how I get rid of bubbles. Now I'm only going to do the one bubble on this coaster but there is quite a few and what I would normally do is I would do them all at once rather than do one then do a little bit of polishing do another and then do another little bit of polishing so if I'm going to rescue this so I've got a stone um, grinder here on the Dremel literally I just go into the bubble like that get rid of the dust and um, just check it's all gone there we go it's all gone as you can see the bubble's gone with that tool and now I will give it a bit of a polish and then I would do all of them first then I polish all of them and then I would do another pour over it and you won't actually see the bubble 
uh, I found that you don't actually see the bubble because once the resin's gone on it. So I'll use that Halfords compound, which is just like a tea cut. I've put it on one of the soft um, things here. I shouldn't have used one I've used before on something else because it is a little bit dirty and it's left a little bit of dirt in there. But that'll come out quite easily. So I'll spray it with water. I'll spray it with water and then give it a wipe down. <coughs> Firstly, that gets, can you hear my dog barking in the background? It's because the fire's on and she likes the bark of the fire. So I'll give it a bit of a rub down and I need to get that little bit of dirt out. So um, what I'll do is, and I always do this anyway to ensure that I've got all the uh, polishing paste out of the holes. I get a pair of tweezers, a wet cloth, and I go into the uh, hole and clean it up. And as you can see, it's nice and clean now and it's all polished and what you'll see is that once i've given it another very thin level of resin you won't actually see those um, bubbles and it will be gone so i'm now going to move on to a coaster i made and this was made with heat resistant resin and what happened was it did shrink away from the edge, so I need to sand it off. So I'm using one of the sanding discs now that comes with the Dremel um, tool kit. And I'm just going round and I'm leveling it, leveling it out. Now, I don't normally polish this out because I actually quite like this effect uh, around the base of the coaster. And also it gives it a little bit of a grip and it kind of gives it a border, but you need to be really really careful when you do this to make sure it's even now i wasn't as careful as i could have been here as you'll see in a second uh, because i go over the edge um but that was probably because i was rushing it but it is nice and flush here now with the rest of it and this is why you really must wear one of those um, particle masks as well and a good one because this dust does kind of get everywhere it gets on your hand. See there, I've I've gone over the edge. So what I would do with that is now I would probably either go around the edge and have a thicker edge to it, <clears throat> or I would polish this out and do a little bit of a pour over it. But what you'll see is by spraying it with water, you'll see what it would look like at this stage if you were to cover it in resin. Because when it's wet, that's really what it's look, going to look like when the resin's gone back over it. So if you feel it's showing up too much, then you need to go down lots of different grits and um, then polish it. But I like that as it is, and I would probably just give that a little brush. I would use a brush and I would coat that with um, some resin. So now here's a coaster I did on an MDF blank. And what I did was I did these and then I forgot about them. And I went back into my studio two or three days later and these are all hardened with these drips on them. And I hadn't put tape on the back of them, which is really, really annoying. Now, I could spend quite a time with an X-Acto knife and pick this off. But actually, I find it easier just to use one of the coarse grit um, sanding um, discs and going round it with those. And it does get off quite flush. But please use a very light touch. And again, make sure you've got a respirator on. But use a very light touch because if not, you will dig into the wood. You literally just need to go down to, with a very light touch, down to the very edge until it's flat. Now you might think, well actually, I don't want that to look like that on the back of my coasters. And I can understand that. So you could either um, paint the back of your coasters once this is done. Or you can do what I do, and that is I buy felt squares and I cover them in felt. So I'm just getting rid of that dust again. And I always use water to get rid of the dust because it stops it flying around everywhere. Okay, and I've got some squares of felt and they're quite thin squares. I, I, I bought loads of it and I literally would just use some, some glue, some Pritt stick or some decent glue and glue that down and then cut them out and then that would be done. So one of the important things that you need to be considering as well when using a Dremel or sanding or doing anything like that is cleaning up. Now, don't use a dustpan and brush because all that will do is it will push these particles around and they'll float around in your air. 
I have my extractor fan on anyway. Uh, you can't hear that because I'm, I'm doing the voiceover. But I spray everything with a very light mist of water and use a cloth because that stops it going everywhere, getting into the air and you breathing it in or you or touching it at a later date. And I clean that right up, okay, like that. And then I make sure I put the cloths in a bag and I chuck them away. So there we go. That's how I use the Dremel 400. I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share this video as much as you can to help my channel grow. Bye.